to help. Right. Good evening. You guys can hear me, right? Yes. Right. Okay. We have two more to join with us. Uh, so right, it's time up. Let's start. Uh, I'm Dr. Sohel. I'm the program leader for your uh, DBA program. Tonight, I will be giving you an overview of the program and the expectations. Um, and also the requirements huh, and the journey, how you can complete, and also the facilities huh, provided by the university. So this is actually triple award program. And some of you actually subscribe for dual award, depending on your subscription. So as I'm go going along in this program, uh, I will be discussing on the partnership and award universities, program structure, program process, program support, and program final degree and classifications, right? Uh, I need all of you to mute your mic huh, so that uh, no distraction. And whenever I, any questions uh, you can raise or you can put in the chat box. Right. Now, as I mentioned, this is a triple award or, tri or dual award, depending on your subscription. The parent university is the Britain University, and our partner universities are UCAM from Spain and Vern University from Croatia. All right. A brief information about the Britain University. Uh, recently, Britain University is certified by the Colipo. This is a uh, quality and service award by the French government. Besides, uh, uh, Britain University is also accredited by ENFA, which is European Association for Quality Assurance in Higher Education, and CIS, which is a Council of International Schools. Now, the ENQA is actually a designated stakeholder organization of the quality insurance in the European Higher Education Institute. And they also represent uh, interest internationally in support and provide them with a comprehensive service and networking opportunities. While the CIS or the Council of International Schools are uh, committed to higher education, national, international education, they also provide a uh, uh, what we call the leader for the field of school evaluation and accreditation worldwide. Uh, they go through the universities or the institutions and they look into the quality and service provided, the accredit. So both uh, NQA and uh, CIS, Britain University is uh, recognized. Our partner university, uh, UCAM, is a uh, four-star university in the QS World University ranking. And the UCAM is also recognized by the Times, uh, the World University ranking is a thousand plus. So besides uh, UCAM is also the 10th uh, in the European, uh, European Union recognized for teaching quality according to the Times ranking. Now, these universities are also recognized by the EFMD, which is European Foundation for Management Development. This uh, accredited body, they have uh, 966 institutions whereby more than 30,000 management and development professionals are within this membership. And their service is uh, 
more than uh, 90 countries around the world. Our universities are also accredited by the UKS, which is a uh, European uh, quality assurance international system for accredited schools. And you see the number of countries uh, they are recognized. A uh, bit more information about the Britain University. Uh, the vision, our vision is developing people with the skills and acknowledge uh, the equip them for current and future employment. Our mission is uh, on the to be a world leader in education. Our mission is also to develop programmers that offer educational and vocational opportunities to the students. We aim to facilitate student success in a distance learning programs by providing and promoting the environment of equal opportunity that allows our graduates to be employed with the necessary knowledge and skills. Most importantly, we want to inspire and empower our students and people through education. So this is our motto and uh, this is uh, Mr. John Francis Jardin, she is our chair of the academic board in the Britain University. Right. These are our partners, huh? partners to university. As I mentioned that uh, uh, Oligo, these are uh, supported and approved by the Ministry of uh, Education in France, Ministry of Education uh, and uh, other recognized bodies. UCAM is a university from Spain, Bern from uh, Croatia, London Examination Board, and also the EADL, which is European Association for Distance Learning. Right. Now, let's look into our programs. Uh, this is the sample certificates that upon completion of the program, you're gonna achieve it. First one is the Brittany University. Uh, after that is the Bern and the UCAM certificates. Now let's look into the program structure. This is most important part. Uh, how many of you are doing a research mode and how many of you are doing a mixed mode? Um, well, I'm in the mixed mode, but um, I got uh, exam uh, from all the taught subject. Right. And I'm also same as Tony. Yeah, right. exempted from all subjects except the physics. How about Albert? Yes, I'm also uh, just only uh, prepared uh, physics and computer course. All right. Victor? Yeah, me too. I, also, I also have all the courses exempted. So I just do the uh, 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 physics All right. on the mixed mode. The reason I ask actually there is a difference between uh, a research mode and uh, those who are doing the mixed mode. So since all of you are uh, doing here, the mixed mode is good. So our discussion will be much more easier. Uh, road one, uh, which is mixed mode, the students uh, are required to do five thought models. However, however, those who have masters and other qualification based on your previous educational qualifications, thought modules are exempted. So I'm sure all of you know which uh, whose uh, modules are exempted and whose are not, right? Whereas in the road two research mode, uh, there is no thought modules. The reason uh, is if you see number two, uh, the the word count, huh? the mixed mode is twenty to thirty thousand words, huh? twenty to thirty thousand. Whereby, uh, in research mode, the word count is higher, which is uh, forty to forty five thousand. In uh, thought modules, uh, in the mixed mode, after completing the thought modules, or those who are uh, exempted from the thought modules, they will straight away go for research. Uh, thesis, thesis writing. In thesis writing, initially you will be asked to prepare a proposal. In mixed mode, we do there is the proposal is not marked. Whereby, in research mode, your proposal has to be you know uh, twenty five percent 
out of the 100%. So it is graded and 75% graded for thesis. Whereby in mixed mode, uh, you need to uh, straight away write your proposal and then uh, you submit your proposal. Once your proposal is approved, you will be assigned with a supervisor and you will be start writing your uh, research or thesis. Now, uh, is this clear? This, this part is clear. Any question? No, no question. No question. All right. Okay. All right. Right. So okay. since all of you are doing the mixed mode and uh, none of you required to do the any modules and you got exemption. So first thing after today, there will be another two session. Uh, that would be your uh, first pro uh, session would be how to write the research proposal, which is very important. So I'll be guiding you how to write a research proposal. The third session would be the research methodology, uh, the basic information uh, and uh, uh, information on the literature review, uh, your data analysis, uh, how to write the uh, chapters, uh, all this information will be provided. So uh, today we'll be going through the overview of uh, your uh, program, DBA program. Now, what is the process huh? uh, for the mixed mode? Uh, you, you, you can, uh, when you start your uh, writing your proposal, Approximately, you will get uh, one to three months, uh, three months time. So within three months time, you, you, you are required to submit your proposal. Once your proposal is approved uh, and your supervisor is assigned to you, you can straight away write thesis and uh, you can, you can uh, submit, uh, you can complete no less than six months. So minimum six months. Uh, so uh, before six months, you cannot submit. So after six months, if you are uh, okay or you complete your thesis and your supervisor approved, you actually can submit, mm -hmm. right? Six, nine or 12 months, huh? depending on your uh, ability to write. So first thing, uh, we'll start with your research methodology. And in the research methodology, we'll be guiding you how to develop your proposal. You have to write your proposal, then you'll be given about three months time. Huh? So if you finish it earlier, you can submit earlier. So your whole process will be earlier, but the max is one to three months, right? And then uh, your supervision. And then uh, once your supervisor approve your thesis, you can submit, then you go for final viva. Hmm? So this is the whole process. Now, what is this? Uh, this is a bit information. Let's say you started in January 2022. If you think that you can finish everything by 31st of August, uh, so we can forward you, your result will be published by November. So you will get your certificate and all. Uh, so this is the cutoff date, actually, because in every year we have three exam boards. Uh, we have the Brittany University exam board. We also have uh, example with the partner universities like UCAM and Barney universities, right? So you need to follow up with the, all other university requirements as well. So uh, the, the earliest you can submit by 31st of August. Huh? If not, you, you can also submit by 25th of November, your result will be published on 30, 27th of January and thereafter. This is just an, an overview uh, and for your idea, uh, going to submit, uh, if you want to get result by when, uh, this is an information, right? So since uh, none of you are here with the research mode, I skip this slide. Now, program support. In this program, how do we support our students? Uh, of course, uh, initially, uh, today is uh, your orientation. You will be uh, roughly getting an idea what is the expectation from this program. And follow up with this, uh, we will provide you two more sessions on research methodology, uh, how to write your research paper and what are the structure, what are the format, what are the rules and regulation, what to do, what not to do. We also allocate you as supervisor to guide you through one-to-one. Mm, -one. And we also provide online research library. So I will, I will show you, I'm sure all of you got your student access and I will show you how to access the online library in later slides. 
So this is an idea. So today is your orientation. Uh, most probably the next class would be on 14, but uh, as you will be receiving email eh, with the notification and the link uh, for Zoom. And another session will be 21st. Eh? So this is an idea. So total, uh, you will be receiving three face-to-face -face, uh, a session. Besides this, uh, students will also be provided an online learning management system. I will show you the actual, uh, how it looks like, your student portal. In the student portal, uh, student can access and get the tutorial on how to use the online learning system, access the learning materials for each module. Uh, uh, also the referencing module, including case studies, article, any eBooks, access to online uh, module leader via online discussion po uh, uh, postings. So if you have any, any inquiries, any support you need, you actually can post in your uh, LMS. Huh? So the program leader or myself, huh? the mod uh, pro uh, module leader or the program leader will respond accordingly eh, to assist you. You will be also, you can access and download your assignment questions, those who are uh, having the top modules, but in case of all of you uh, who got exemption on it, you can also access and submit the upload assignment or your proposal, even your thesis and all the thesis formats, uh, the forms, form means your cover page, your uh, uh, interaction with the supervisor, plagiarism checklist. I will show you all the forms as well after this and your supervisor uh, uh, guidelines. Uh, you can also, of course, check your result in the portal. Now, this is how it look like uh, your student portal. Uh, how many of you have seen this already? Have you seen this? All of you? All right. All right. Good. All right. So you need to access this as a sign in as a student. Hmm? Student. Then your student ID and the password, whatever you have received. LIRN, uh, which is your online library, how to access this. I will show you after this in uh, real, real time access and your thesis. So under thesis, you can see uh, you've got introduction, business research methodology. Uh, let's say you go under uh, introduction, this you can see uh, the word for the welcoming uh, DBA students, appendix referencing system, your all the forms, uh, BU assignment cover page, BU DBA thesis proposal guidelines, the you uh, marking sheet, uh, the thesis supervision progress report, uh, thesis ethical form, format for final thesis, uh, all the forms are uploaded in your student portal under the section introduction. Now, uh, second one, the business uh, research methodology, and you can see all these things, all informations are there. I will be showing you in a real life situation as well. Now, this is important. Under the resources, you will get all the textbook pertaining to your research methodology. You will be also getting your, uh, how to write your dissertation or thesis, all the forms, all the textbooks are there. Mm -hmm. all right. And the live lecture, for example, today we got a link. You can also uh, attend live lecture by clicking there from your student portal. Now, there is in the under your library, there is a section called ProQuest. Uh, what is ProQuest? Uh, ProQuest actually got three, uh, I mean, this is one of the largest uh, sources of information. ProQuest, you can access the previous student thesis, those who have completed. You can also access uh, journals, articles, case studies, magazines pertaining to your academic. Uh, I will show you how to go access your LIR. This is this is how it looked like the the homepage for LIRN. Then you go to the sections. Uh, when you go to the sections, you got different uh, many uh, uh, titles. Uh, all of your business, so you can click into the business, and then uh, this page will appear. Then uh, you want to looking for accounting related or uh, uh, European or Asian business collection, whatever. This is the name of the journals. The moment you click, uh, it will appear like this. For example, uh, Asian and European journals. You, you uh, perhaps you are looking uh, some journals related to your thesis, uh, the topic you have decided. So you can you can search here. So 
uh, let's say you are searching something uh, for uh, artificial intelligence uh, or the business application, you see 110,000 uh, plus uh, uh, the, the search. Huh? So the moment you click it, you can see the full text, huh? full text of the thesis or articles or journals. So this is uh, this is for your support. Hmm? Uh, while you, you are writing your thesis, you need to give citations. Huh? So this would be a good help for you. And this is uh, really a very good source of information. Now, the next is the, the thesis supervision and the responsibility of the student and the supervisor. This is most important. Huh? Uh, I have checked you all of your uh, information and all, and uh, some of you are working as uh, and none of you are pure academic. So we understand this. Therefore, uh, you need to be a bit uh, careful. You need to allocate your time and understand uh, the business research methodology. Uh, all of you, this is very important and this is the very basic. And if you don't have the basic, your foundation will be very, very weak. Mm -hmm. So in order to do this, you need to do a kind of st start reading, reading. Your thesis is basically divided into five chapters, huh? five chapters. Chapter one is basically introduction. Chapter two is a literature review. Chapter three is a research methodology. Chapter four is data analysis and findings. And chapter five, we call it conclusion, whereby you can also conclude and you give your recommendation uh, of what is based on the findings of your research. Now, in the introduction, uh, introduction to the business research. So we also teach you the research process, uh, identifying the problem statement. Basically, this is this slide. You can call it as as a syllabus that we will be going through in next two session. Uh, next upcoming two session, we will be covering all these things. So this is what I mentioned in chapter one to five. Chapter one, introduction. Uh, what are the things we are expecting? We are expecting to introduce your, your research topic. While you introduce your research topic, you need to very clearly state your problem statement. Your problem statement is a key because if there is no problem, there is no need to research. There is no need to write in the thesis. You are, you are doing a research means you have a problem. So you need to define your problem. Again, uh, some of the students, they just write a problem statement, they write it very clearly and a very good statement. But then uh, uh, something that you see as a problem, I might not see as a problem. Do you understand what I'm saying? So you need to provide citation. So you need to provide justification. Justification means you, you give some journal references, some uh, article references, some uh, can be in newspaper references, huh? right? So now also joining, okay, all right. So you got it right. So your problem statement, uh, I, I, some, some students they write in few lines. Uh, this is doctorate level, remember, uh, this is not the master's level. So your research problem is a key factor, mm, key factor. And then of course, uh, you need to justify, mm, justify your uh, research, uh, research background and uh, rationale for choosing this topic. In chapter one, uh, uh, you also need to write research aim and objective and research questions, right? Some of the students, they, they do not try to write any research uh, aim and objectives, and some of them don't write research question. Uh, trust me, if you don't follow all these things, these are incomplete. So in chapter one, I repeat, uh, when you introduce, you also discuss about the background of your uh, problem or the background of your research. You, you, you will identify the problem statement, followed by research aim and objectives. Perhaps you can discuss about the significance of your research as well. This is all in chapter one. Now, what is in chapter two? Chapter two is a literature review. Literature review of, there will be one whole session on literature review. This is very critical and huh? it's very important. But in brief, huh? you are showing us the studies or the importance of the studies pertaining to your uh, research. You are also giving some contemporary or comparative information, uh, the same research area, which has been done some other areas, perhaps. And in literature review also, you need to uh, 
define your variables. You need to draw your uh, uh, hypothesis. You also need to formulate your theoretical framework based on the discussion you have done in a literature review. So how to write literature review and all, uh, I'll be discussing in another session and I will be giving you some uh, materials so that you can uh, read through and you can uh, work on it. So theoretical framework, identify the research variables, all part of the literature review and constructing the thesis, uh, testing hypothesis. The next is uh, what you call a research methodology. In research methodology, you need to design your own plan. You also will be telling, is this a qualitative research or quantitative research, or you are going for mixed method, right? And then uh, who are your samples? Uh, how do you do, uh, how you are doing the samplings? Have you done any pilot test? Uh, why you have died your pilot test, what not? Huh? So these, all these things you will be discussing in your uh, chapter three. Chapter four, basically, after the collecting data, you will analyze. Uh, this is also an important thing that in doctorate level, we do not want you to simply analyze your data by using your uh, spreadsheet or Excel sheet. No, you should use uh, any statistical tools like SPSS, uh, this is the minimum. You can also use a uh, smart PLS. You can also use what you call uh, R or depending if it is uh, qualitative, you can use NVivo. There are many software. And you need to uh, analyze the uh, basic components. Uh, you need to analyze and you need to find uh, the present your findings uh, in a very convincing manner. This is uh, this is another key area of your research because if your analysis is wrong, somebody might reject your research, tell that they, your information is wrong, right? So this part also will be guiding you. We'll be discussing in our research methodology class. In chapter five, basically you are uh, providing your uh, conclusion, uh, your findings, you're also telling us your research objectives you have achieved or not, if achieved, how you have achieved, and then you will put your recommendation. Right, so this is a, now this is a, what you call the research proposal guidelines. Uh, basically starting from today, since you already enrolled this program, uh, you, need to, you need to identify uh, research, your topic, your title, and then you need to write a research proposal. Now, Research proposal, the word count should be four to 4,000 to 4,500 within this. Huh? And what are the things you need to uh, write, we'll be discussing. This one is an uh, example of the, the form, acknowledgement form. Right. So in, in the proposal, basically, you can discuss all these things, huh? all these things, your introduction and background, your rationale or reasoning for choosing the, the topic, yeah, the research topic. You also need to identify or explain your uh, problem uh, or research statement, your research aim, objectives, and significance, uh, and yeah, perhaps the research questions. Uh, uh, you, you can write about the basic uh, literature review or the preliminary literature review, because uh, the whole literature review you'll be writing while you are writing your thesis, actual thesis. In the, in the uh, proposal, we also need you to write a literature review so that this will support, uh, it will show your significance or relevance of your research, right? And then uh, in the methodology, you will be telling us types of the research and uh, who are your population uh, uh, and what method you are, you, you, you're gonna use for your uh, uh, research, right? And this is an important thing. Huh? Many students, they don't. We need a gun chart. Huh? We need your plan. Huh? Don't forget to include this in your proposal. Huh? This is an important part of the proposal, right? Gun chart. Huh? We, we want to know what is your plan, when you are going to submit this. Huh? Uh, so this is the uh, plan. It is not necessary. Sometimes you have, when you have emergency, this and that, yeah, we understand. But then you must include in your proposal so that overall you have a plan, you have a direction. Now, mark sheet for the thesis proposal. This is mainly for what you call uh, the 
research mode. As I mentioned, the research mode, uh, the student, they, their uh, proposal will be marked, but for the mixed mode student, their research proposal won't be marked. Uh, their thesis will be 100 marks. But by research mode, their uh, thesis would be 75, proposal will be 25. So this is how the, the, the mark sheet for the, no, the students, right? Now, this is a uh, guideline, how to write your the, uh, proposal. Sometimes the student, uh, they, they're also a bit confused huh, how to write. So before we're going to uh, what they call the th uh, uh, proposal, uh, you, you also need to write a kind of abstract. But this one I'm showing in a guideline for overall uh, overview of the thesis, uh, final thesis. So, because just now we have discussed the proposal. In the final thesis, you will be writing an abstract. Uh, earlier in the assignment, you all have done executive summary. But executive summary and abstract is a bit different. Abstract will be giving an overview of the whole thesis and ideally 250 to 350 words in, in a single page. Then you will be writing your acknowledgement because in the thesis journey, you will be interacting with your supervisor. You also will be interacting with the, uh, the, the people uh, who will be helping you to collect sampling. If you uh, want to do any research for any particular organization, that organization need to give you access this and that. So you will be interacting with a lot of people. You might acknowledge them here. And then you need to do write a table of content, All right? Uh, now, table of content, uh, recently I come across and then we, we, all, we basically rejected the student. Uh, he write it manually. Manually means uh, introduction page number this, literature page number this, but then under introduction or under the heading of introduction, you got another few subheadings, isn't it? Background or problem statement, research aim and objectives. Huh? So all the headlines and sub headlines huh, need to be clarify in your table of content. Huh? I will show you one, ex one good example and another bad example now. So uh, how to write uh, 20 to 30,000 words for mixed method and 40 to 45. This is, a, I show you a calculation. Okay, this is a good example of table of contents. Huh? This is the introduction. Uh, this is uh, chapter one, you got a page number. Then the subheadings, uh, you got research problem, purpose of the study, rationale or significance of the study, scope of the study, definitions. Uh, so you see that it's a good example of your uh, table of content, huh? acknowledgement, abstract, list of paper, list of figures, huh? so all these things you need to include in your table of content. Right. So after writing table of content, you will go to straight away to introduction. So for the mixed mode, we, we, we suggest uh, your chapter one uh, should be between 2005 to 3000, uh, 2005 to, to 3000 words. And these are the subheadings you can include for your uh, chapter one. Uh, these are the subheadings we've been discussing this. For literature review, we recommend you to write 7,500 7, to 8,500 words, right? If you if your uh, if your literature review or chapter two is within this word, you should be fine. And your chapter three, eh? chapter three, which is uh, theoretical framework and methodology, should be somewhere 4,500 to 5,000 words within this range of words. Your data analysis or chapter four, because you need to write more, that could be your 7,000 to 7,500 words. And your uh, chapter five or conclusion should be between 2,000 to 2,500 words. So if you follow this kind of word countings, you will be within, you will be within 20 to 30,000 word counts because uh, we experienced a case whereby a student, uh, he didn't track the word counts. Uh, when he finished his thesis, uh, the total word count was uh, 64,000. So when he complete, the total word count is 64. And 
after this day student don't know how to you know did I, which one delete which one to keep it took some time and uh, with the help of supervisor finally he made it but then if you have a plan and uh, worked on idea you will be moving through a direction right you won't need to waste your time and all and the moment you write actually 64000 what it will be really difficult because when you are deleting something then important might get out of part so uh, the important part is out then i you know it, it won't make any sense later on right now the references huh? uh, minimum huh? minimum for the mix method is 80 to 100 but we expect you to write more huh? and then when you give the references or the citation this is 2022 already yeah so try to make it within last five years last five years means what 2022 2021 19 18 17 so don't try to go beyond huh? now there are references even before 19 also you you need to give make sure 70 percent of the references are the latest five years 30 percent all also no problem because some books uh, are published in uh, 1974, 1980, 1990. So you have to give, and that are the fundamentals or the theories and the models uh, accepted worldwide kind of uh, theories, uh, theories, established theories. So those are uh, old days, no problem. But try to give more reference in the recent days, lesser from the old one. Uh, huh? Right. So this is an overview and in, in the appendix, uh, in the appendix, you can add your questionnaire or the survey form. You can also add your, uh, uh, what do you call, uh, the approvals. Sometimes you want to go any company or survey, you can write it there. You can also include your uh, statistical output. For example, uh, uh, if you use your uh, SPSS you, and the analysis part, you want to show details, uh, more proof, uh, you can add in the appendix but don't include in your chapter four because that will increase your word count. Mm, that, is in, that will increase your word count. So you can put in the appendix. Remember, whatever you put in the appendix is not uh, including the word count. So this is the benefit. Huh? And that also shows or gives you more credibility, uh, more authenticity of your work. Uh, okay, this is the declaration form that you need to fill up and your supervisor need to sign whereby you did not copy or plagiarize from anybody. Huh? So uh, you need to declare it. And of course, uh, you, need to, uh, uh, you need to add your uh, plagiarism also. So plagiarism, we do not, from uh, our side, we do not specify any, any particular software. You can use Turnitin or you can use Viper or any other software, uh, and you need to attach the report. Right? This is the... Uh, ethical form. This is the mark sheet. Eh? This is the mark sheet. This is important because you need to know uh, how your, uh, what do you call, how your work will be assessed. So 10% in the introduction, 20% in the literature review, uh, research framework design and all, 20%, data analysis and presentation and findings, 30%. Conclusion and recommendation, 5%. Word count, uh, grammar, punctuation, spelling, 5% and reference is 10%. Remember a few things, uh, for example, reference, uh, this and that, very easy to score. But then why student cannot score? Because uh, less than 80 and sometimes all the old references. Uh, so, and then referencing, you need to follow Harvard University style, uh, Harvard, Harvard style. Uh, now, Different universities got different requirements. Some universities, they choose APA style, uh, Chicago style. But for Brittany, we, we recommend our students to follow Harvard, Harvard referencing style. Now, this, this is the final uh, award, uh, final uh, degree. Eh? So to achieve a distinction grade, uh, your marks needs to be 70 or above 70 percent, eh? 70 to 70. Those who will get uh, between 60 to 69, they, are, they will be getting at the merit grade. And uh, anything more than 49, eh? which is 50 and to 59 is pass, right? So 
from my experiences, uh, those who follow the basic requirements and all, it is easy for uh, easy to score. And depending on your uh, research topic and uh, the adherence to the requirements, uh, uh, you can easily score uh, seventy percent or distinction. Now, now this is all about uh, uh, your uh, program. Uh, expectations, specification, and also the requirements. Now, let me show your student portal. Huh? Can you see the screen? Yeah. Okay. LIRN, right? All of you, those who got the student portal, LIRN. This is very important. Eh? And uh, very few universities got this kind of uh, resources. Now, how it works, huh? the moment you click LIRN huh? here, yeah. it, it will come like this. Huh? It's the link to the library. Right. So it will link to the third parties. Right. Now continue to a new window. Why I am showing this? Huh? This is like ocean, this is like ocean and somebody who don't know the direction, they will be easily lost. Now, you see here, there are many subtitles and all of you, uh, to my knowledge, you all are in uh, business. So click here business, if you want to uh, search for any, what do you call, uh, any uh, journals or articles related to your topic, click here. Now, there, these are the name of the uh, different publishers or different organizers. Huh? I will go one by one. Huh? So for example, uh, Asian and European business collection, you can click it here. See here. For example, uh, you want to search, uh, let's say, e-government adoption. Now you see here, 685 uh, results. It means 685 articles you have. Let's say you want to be more specific, uh, more specific. So let's say e-government adoption in Hong Kong. So you see, you got only two results. Do you understand or not? 600, 700 uh, articles might be difficult for you to read and it takes a lot of time. So you also need to know how to zoom it. Hmm? So you need to be very focused. You see now two, two you can read it easily and you, you, you can see what are the information you can take, what are the information you can't take, right? So this is how you can uh, use it, right? Now let's look into the other one, uh, ProQuest. I told you that ProQuest is also the, you know, the past, uh, what they call the completed student uh, dissertation, to student thesis. Now you can, you want to have an idea. You want to see what are the researches done in the same field. You can, you can look into this. Now, let's do uh, customer satisfaction. Now, customer satisfaction can be different. It can be in the online, online purchasing uh, in the hypermarket. Different, different. So you see here, 232,697 This is huge. So as I said, this is like ocean, you will be lost. So now let's say uh, customer satisfaction for online purchasing. Now you see from 232, it, the result is now 35,000. If you want to zoom it, you can uh, uh, customer satisfaction for Alibaba products uh, or the Lazada or the Shopee. So it can be more zoom. So this is how it's a technique to search, uh, to search. Uh, so this is what uh, the online library facilities you are having. If you want to see one, uh, for example, uh, you click it here. Effects of e-services quality on customers uh, online purchase intention. So you can see the student who 
and when she completed and what are the things which university all the content you want to read you can read it so this is for your dissertation progress but these all are the journals uh, journals and magazines uh, and also the articles uh, especially the asian and european business collection is very uh, recognized uh, very recognized you want to search anything for uh, your research methodology you can search it from here you can search it from here so there are a lot there are a lot thousands of thousands of books and articles you can go through all right so that is about your LIR. And now I go to your student portal to show you something. Now, all of you, when uh, this is your, uh, this semester, uh, student portal, huh? when you click on your introduction, huh? you see here, all the forms. Huh? Just now I show you the screenshot of the forms, like plagiarism declaration form, your uh, final thesis submission form, your uh, ethical submission form, your supervisor progress report form, uh, marking sheet, this and that, all the forms are there. Whatever the forms you need, all the forms are in uh, section one introduction. In section two, you got all the research methodology, all the books. Huh? You want to read something about the, your how to write introduction is there. Your reviewing literature, identifying problem statement, all these informations are there. You can read a lot, you can read a lot, right? And today's, uh, today's uh, session is recorded and it will be uploaded here as well. So you can, in future, if you want, you can go. The next important is under resource, under resource. So under resource, you've got, a, Model specification, that means kind of syllabus here. Yeah? Thesis writing, uh, your thesis writing guidelines. So under this, you, you can see, the moment you click there, this, of, uh, the, the, there are some materials here, it will pop up. Then you have your, uh, this is, can you see my screen now? This is writing format and all, right? So this is there and you can have your, what do you call, uh, your research method. This is a textbook, guidelines, research process and writing literature review, also textbook, Op open access uh, literary resources, also textbook, graduate uh, research methodology, also textbook. Mm -hmm. All these informations are there. Mm -hmm. You can have it here. Right. Now, so far, any question? So let's, uh, we go one by one, huh? Tony, any question, which <laughs> any, you don't understand? Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. So far, okay. Good. That's right. great for me. All right. All right. Uh, yes, it's, it's okay for me. Clear. Huh? Yeah. Uh, Victor? It's well good for me. All right. How about Albert? Okay, that's okay. okay. All right. Now I give you some tasks. Huh? I give you some tasks. Okay, this note is not uh, is not uh, it is not provided there. Can you see my screen now? Yes. Um, uh, we, we can see a folder. Oh, you cannot see the file, is it? Uh, no. All right. Let me share this. Now you can see, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, we have uh, five more minutes uh, to go through. I will give you this. I will uh, share with this this article now. But 
before our next session, I want all of you to read this. Huh? So you will get an idea, the meaning of research. Huh? So you can see eh, the meaning of research. Yeah. Then there are some, what do you call uh, citation, the important citation, eh? some uh, researchers, what is the research? Huh? They give their own opinion. Huh? So, for example, huh? he, he said the research in ac academic activity, huh? such as the term should be used as technical sense. According to the Clifford Woody, research compromise, comprises defining and redefining problems. Defining and redefining. Remember, this is important. Defining and redefining. Formulating hypotheses or suggested solutions. Huh? If there is no problem and no solutions, no research. Huh? Forget it. Right. So there is also definition from others. Huh? So you can read it. This is very interesting. Research objectives. This is some sample, uh, how to write research objectives. You can, you can look into this. And another important thing is you need to read first type of research. So the next class uh, or next session when I ask you what type of research you want to do, so you should be able to give me an answer. Your research should be descriptive or analytical or applied or fundamental or qualitative or quantitative. Hmm? or conceptual or empirical, hmm? or some other types of research. So you, you should read all these things so that you have an idea. What is research? The types of research, that means this will give you more confidence to yourself. Huh? There are many students, huh? if you ask those who completed the DBO or PhD, oh, what if you research? I don't know, I can't remember. So this is kind of embarrassing, isn't it? So you need to know, I'm sure all of you have already decided in your mind, I want to do my research on this area, right? So you read all these things, five or six points, so you know what type of research you want to go. Hmm? So you read it first, we'll discuss more in our next uh, session. Let me share you this, uh, what do you call this article in your chat box. I don't think I can share this uh, here. What do you do? Uh, all of you drop your email email address in the chat box so I can share. I can write you the email. Just write uh, write your uh, email address. I'll share you the additional materials. Okay. So I received Tony, Nagom, uh, Victor. How about uh, others? Albert? and smart chain. Right. Yes, I'm Alan. Smart right. chain, only my, only my account of Zoom. All right, all right. please sir, text yes. me your email address. I will send you the, the materials. Yes, thank you. Professor, do we also need to go through some classes for methodology? Yes, yes, uh, we, we provide another two classes. You will be receiving the email, most probably on uh, 14th and 21st. 14th and 25th. 21st, okay. but you will be receiving an email, huh? Yes. All right. Okay. Uh, I, I just send my email to you. Can you receive my message of the email? Albert, yes, I received it. Okay, thank you. All right. Now, uh, okay, uh, in your chat box, I just uh, share a link for your, what do you call the Google form. Uh,
this is our normal practice. We want to hear from you, uh, your feedback, uh, so that uh, if there's anything we can improve, we will improve. It will take about two to three minutes. So before we end our session, I want all of you to complete this. Uh. Thank you. Hey, Dr. You mean, you mean you have shared with us in the chat box? Yes, the... yes. Yes, I sent you, I shared the link. Let's have a look. I, I just don't find the name in the chat box. I don't find the name in the chat in the chat box. Yeah, yeah, I think it goes to the Albert. Now check all of you.